I've loved Alaska since I was five or six years old, since I first heard about it. I was old enough to read. I got my first magazine, looked at the pictures of the bears in Alaska and the, in the outback. There was something more to it. I don't know if I'll ever know the answer to that. Um, why? But I just always, I could hear the sirens calling me and uh, I just wasn't going to rest until I got up here. You know, because of football, because of professional football, that's played during the best time to be in Alaska from like June, July, all the way till December. And that's the time that you want to be here. That's the time that you want to be in Alaska. So pro football was holding me away from Alaska in some respects, but also giving me a livelihood that would continue after I retired so that I could get to Alaska finally and, uh, and make it. The first time I was here was 1969. I was on the way to Vietnam with the USO. The plane we were on uh, stopped here and was going to refuel and had developed some kind of mechanical difficulties. This is back in 1969, I, I, and this place was so much different. The city areas have grown, and it, it's pretty, you don't realize where you are. There's little bits of flavor to it that, that show you where you are, but when you get out, when you get out and remove from that, then you start to realize you know, that there's still a, an outback Alaska and a lot of it. In 1969, he landed here, and like I say, it was very different. It was, uh, downtown Anchorage was like maybe four square blocks. Uh, it was, out back was like right there. You could see it from downtown. You could just, on uh, the bottom floor on the sidewalk, you could see it. So I rented a car and went to drive, and I drove out just a little ways from the airport and stopped at a restaurant. And I uh, had a sandwich there and asked to use the facilities, and they said, oh, they're out back. And, and I walked out to the outhouse and, uh, you know, the woods, the, the, it was the edge of town and the forest was right there. And there was a sign that said, big bold letters, uh, this is the Anchorage city limits. And uh, underneath it, someone had written, you are now part of the food chain. And I just stood there and looked at that. And I thought, that kind of tells the story. Well, Alaska's home for us uh, probably five months of every year. For years, we were coming up doing the show, so we had to come up. I hooked him, I harpooned him, and I shooted him, and he's still not in the boat. <laughs> Nice. The show, uh, North to Alaska, is an outdoor adventure series. Uh, it was nationally broadcast uh, for 16 years, and it was basically a fishing and hunting show, but much more than that, too. Um, we couldn't do, we felt we couldn't do a series in Alaska and really do it justice without including a lot of other elements that are Alaska and a lot of information for, for tourists. Um, where to go, what to see when you're in different areas. Um, so we like to think it, it had a lot of variety and uh, that people were attracted to it for that reason. Yeah, sure. He's a good eater. Yeah. You can always cut something loose. Good deal. Nice fish, Larry. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> nice fish. We were doing two shows, and the Alaska show was getting all the attention. So we combined the sponsors, and we just decided to go with 26 episodes on the uh, on the Alaskan series, uh, North to Alaska. <laughs> I think the further out back we got, the more I liked it. And we went to some really out back places. I mean. There was places up on the north, uh, up in the north that were way out back, and areas out back uh, down around Dillingham in that area. Uh, when you go to those places, uh, there's a uniqueness to them. It's almost uh, kind of a mystical thing.
There he is. Ah. Then when the show retired, we, you know, it ran its course. We, we thought maybe we would be busy with the show for five to eight years. Well, the thing ran like 15 years. So we decided to retire it. But what happened is I thought when we retired it, that would be the end of it. We wouldn't, but all our fans still want to know what's going on. You know, they want to, they like to hear about Alaska and they like to hear current things about Alaska. It was a lot of fun and a great experience, but um, it was it was a lot of work too. So we're winding down a little bit after that retirement of the show, uh, but still have our hands in some projects. We're um, uh, developing our, our website a little further, um, getting into social media a little more, and um, and still playing around with our video um, that we shot over those 16 years and and uh, making that available online as well. It's more than just myself and Andre now. Uh, we're, we're featured at the show and just more than us and just the crew. We developed an audience over the years of thousands and thousands of people that now follow us on Facebook and they, 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 they wanna know. They are, they're, I hesitate to say they're demanding, but they're just short of that. <laughs> they wanna know where are you going? What are you doing? You know, what are, are you gonna fish this year? You know, a lot of questions. And, uh, and what we do is now we come up and we're building that into a, a kind of a semi-show in itself. So we continue to come back. It's such a, a big state with so many things to do and people are very interested in it and didn't know much about it at that time. So um, we felt, you know, we would do it for a few years and we'd get to see Alaska, it'd be a great experience, but we ended up doing it 16 years and even better. I was after Jim and Merck. I've been after all my teammates at different times to come up and, uh, you know, a lot of them have asked me over the years. A lot of them have asked me uh, hundreds of questions about Alaska. See, there's so many people in the lower 48 that are so intrigued with Alaska. It's like they don't believe what they really hear about it. And when you tell them, when you're around them, they want to know some really basic things, you know, uh, you know, People have no conception. Mercury was a guy that had no conception of what was up here. Mercury still thought people lived in igloos, you know, I, I mean, you know, on a regular basis, you know, year round. I never knew any of this stuff either. I mean, so it was like interesting for me to see how he got there and how he came there uh, and, and who he was as a person. And I didn't realize that he was such a, an avid outdoorsman and hunting and fishing and all that stuff. We, had, we went up there and although it was early September, I guess, it, it was cold then. And uh, um, so we went there and we, we were doing the fishing and I don't know how to fish. They were trying to show me how to throw the line out and the, I, I threw it out and it only went like this and went down like that. So uh, Zonka's wife ended up casting it out there, catching the fish, and then give me the pole to bring it up. And I still couldn't do it, but uh, we had a lot of fun. And uh, it was good seeing Zonka. I haven't seen him for a long time, but uh, we had fun. And believe it or not, Mercury Morris did catch a fish. It was one fish and we, you know, it was hooked. We handed it to him and he caught it. And he took off running, we coached him and he enjoyed it. Jim, I think he can take it or leave it. It was fun seeing them here and kind of out of their element because, you know, obviously this is a lot different from South Florida. It was just a lot of fun for us and especially for Larry to have them here and show them, you know, what he's been doing and where he lives and what he loves. If anyone could describe Alaska, if anyone had the ability, <laughs> the vocabulary, to put Alaska into words, everyone would be here. Uh, that's the beauty of Alaska. You can't capture it. 
We tried to capture it with words. We tried to capture it with videos. We, you can't. Uh, you know, I, I, I try to put it into words and tell people it's the prettiest thing I've ever seen. And it's, there's something, there's a rhythm to life. And I think that that rhythm is there. That tone is there. And uh, when, you're, when you're truly out there and see that, um, and you're alone, and there's nothing but you and the critters. Uh, uh, it's beyond description. I don't, I don't know how to describe that to people other than to tell them, you got to come and, and witness that. He loves it here as well. He's just very relaxed here. Alaska is just a part of him. He, uh, it's away from everything. You know, it's a remote area that um, that we both enjoy for that reason. I think it relaxes me. I think I feel uh, at home.